Hi, Tony Williams with Quick Charge Power, and today we're here to talk about the Tesla Model 3, the car that is a revolution in both the automobile industry worldwide, and in particular, the electric vehicle industry that has never seen a car quite like this one. A mass market car that will sell hopefully in hundreds of thousands, if not millions of copies, much on par to cars like the car that it was designed to compete with, and that is the, the BMW uh, 3 Series, which sells about 400,000 units per year. Uh, the, the car was originally gonna be called Model E, and then Ford apparently complained and said, no, no, we, you're, you're not gonna be able to do that. So they also said they were gonna make an electric vehicle that was gonna be a Model E, but it's very doubtful that would be the case. Uh, so we'll talk about some of the, the features real quick. It's a, it's a five seat car, four doors. Uh, there's been lots written about it. I don't wanna go over all the things that everybody else has written about it, but some unique technical things that seemed odd. Uh, the wheels, for instance, are a different hub pattern than what is on the Model S and Model X Tesla. They went with the 114.3 millimeter uh, bolt pattern instead of 120 millimeter, which is used with German cars. Not sure what that's all about, but uh, it's a small change, but it makes the wheels not interchangeable between uh, different Tesla models. So some of the good things about the car that I really like, the map, of course, it's still a Google map. Uh, that means that everything is updated uh, all the time. Uh, you don't have to put in a, a CD-ROM or you know a little chip or anything or go to a dealer and buy an overpriced uh, upgrade. It's always the current data. The, as you put in a, a route, it's going to show you right along the route where every exit is on the route. It's going to show you where to turn. It's very, very simple and very clear to see where you need to go. And there's lots of other features that come with it. Uh, the car also comes with either an Apple or uh, the, for the iPhone, or it comes with the um, Google or Android type plug. Uh, they only cost $14 if you want to get an extra one, but you can charge two phones at a time in, in the special little compartment that it has for the phones. Uh, some other good things about it, and of course I'm comparing this to a Model S that I also own, so some of these won't compare necessarily to other cars like a BMW 3 Series, and I have owned the B BMW 3 Series in the past. So um, the air conditioner works really, really well. There's a lot of neat, nifty features on it. I'm sure you've seen some of those on other videos on the internet. But just in general, it cools the front seats well, it cools the back seats well, and you can modulate it well and the automatic portion works really well. And it's all done uh, through the center screen. Uh, there are USB ports, I believe a total of four on the car, and it might even be more than that. I might not have even found all the USB ports, which is kind of neat. Uh, Model S was short on that. It has eight cup holders. There's one in each door. There's two in the rear seat, uh, the center rear seat, and there's two in the center console. Uh, there is uh, a map or an umbrella spot or whatever you want to call it, but a place to put things in the door that people put their little odds and ends. Uh, that Model X finally got that, Model S uh, does not. I'm sure every other car on planet Earth has all these kinds of features, but Tesla for whatever reason had not done that. And now they've fixed all those things in the Model 3. Uh, there's also pockets behind the seats. I think this is the first Tesla that actually has a pocket that you can just reach around and put a map or some paperwork or whatever. Uh, or people in the back seat can put their uh, iPhone or iPad or something in for storage. Uh, some, some nifty features that you just don't find in every car, you can adjust the headlights up and down. I'm not really sure why you would want to do that, but you can do it. Uh, maybe if you had a lot of weight in the rear of the car and somehow you had a trailer hitch on it and the front end was tilted up and who knows, I don't know, but you can adjust the headlights. It's not a new feature for cars. My 2012 RAV4 electric vehicle has that feature, so it's been around a long time. Uh, the app works really well. It works better, uh, I think, than the previous app that was used with the Model S. Uh, there's, there's more things you can do with it. And, uh, and it's just a, a fantastic product. Uh, and of course it comes free with the car. The app is part of the, the program. You don't have to pay a fee to have it. Uh, the glass, the car has so much visibility. There's glass everywhere. The doors are easy to look out of. It's easy to get in and out of. Uh, the top of the car from the base of the windshield all the way to the back of the rear window is glass through the roof. And, uh, and of course that's optional, the centerpiece of glass that's directly over your heads. Uh, the base car that will have a 220 mile range, uh, I believe will have a metal panel that will be body color there. But uh, we haven't seen those yet because they haven't been built yet. 
Uh, the range is fantastic for an electric car. People in gasoline cars like a BMW 3 Series really don't think much about that. You just drive the car, when it gets low, you pull into a gas station, you get more gas. Uh, for an electric car, you have to think a little bit about it, but Tesla has a fantastic supercharger network. Uh, it's owned wholly by Tesla, and plus you can use all the public DC fast charging, except for Model 3 can't yet. I have a feeling it's just a software upgrade, but so far the, the so-called CHAdeMO adapter doesn't work, and Tesla does not have the CCS adapter that would be used in regional markets like the United States and in Europe that each have a unique CCS plug. In China, we've already seen that uh, Tesla is going to mount the, the charge port that is unique to China on, physically on the car. So uh, they had to cut a hole in the panel and uh, it's, a, it's quite, a, quite an ordeal compared to what I believe that they'll do in uh, Europe and, and the US. Seats are really comfortable. Uh, I find them uh, very close to being on par with the kind of comfort that I have in my Model S and other premium cars. Uh, it doesn't have the lateral support like the Recaro seats in my Model S or maybe in what would be in an M-Series BMW, but for the standard, like a 330 BMW, it, it meets that standard and it's quite comfortable. And that includes the back seat. The back seat's very comfortable, uh, which was not the case in the Model S. And in addition, I'm at six foot two, I can actually fit in the back seat, which I don't fit so well in the back seat of the Model S. Uh, the car comes with 48 amp charging. That doesn't mean anything to you if you're driving a, a gasoline car, but 48 amp charging means that you can charge the car overnight in about seven to eight hours. That means you could go from completely empty to completely full in about seven to eight hours. That's the amount of time that you would ordinarily sleep. Uh, the car also comes with a 32 amp portable charge cable. This is important uh, simply because you won't need anything at your house except for an electrical outlet and with a proper adapter you can plug in and pull up to 32 amps. That will charge the car at about 20 to 25 miles per hour and uh, assuming that you know you burn the car all the way down to zero it would take you know 12, 14, 16 hours to fill it up at that rate. So it's not ideal but it's pretty good for most use. If you're only driving 50 to 100 miles uh, on average per day, uh, the cable that came with the car with a proper outlet in your garage will get the car charged up overnight. Uh, of course Tesla offers faster charging equipment as do we here at Quick Charge Power. Uh, the supercharger network, as I already mentioned, is phenomenal. It's nationwide, and more than that, it's worldwide. It's all throughout Europe. It's now in China, it's in Japan, it's in the Middle East, and it'll be in lots of other places too. So uh, generally speaking, any place you're ordinarily gonna drive a car, there's gonna be a way to get it charged up and get it to where you wanna go. Generally, the amount of time you'll spend at a supercharger would be 30 to 45 minutes. That's typical of what I do in the Model S, and I have driven that car coast to coast. Uh, and by the way, my Model S only has 240 miles of range and this car has 310 miles of range with an optional uh, standard range of 220. So um, there's um, some dislikes that I have. Um, one of them is that the fuel gauge or whatever that you show on the, uh, on the screen, I'll just call it a fuel gauge for lack of a better term, but it only shows it in terms of miles or kilometers. And I would like that it was just an, I could select or choose to have percent. So if I, if I show a route that goes say from San Diego to Las Vegas and it, the, the routing will show me where I'm gonna charge and how long I'm gonna be there, it'll also show me what percent I will have remaining in the battery. And so they, they, they did it the way I like it for that kind of a feature, but I also want the battery to show me it's 100%. It's like the fuel gauge in a gas car. Is it full or is it empty? I can figure out how far it's gonna go, just like I did with gas cars for decades. Uh, there's no auto high beam. That was a feature in Model S. I don't know if BMW has that, probably, but I don't know. No calendar. Uh, I don't know why the calendar feature is not in the Model 3, but it sounds like, based on tweets coming from uh, company founder Elon Musk, that uh, he has a team of uh, literally a lot of people all working on upgrades and features for the Model 3. One of the things that he mentioned was you would be able to do voice commands and then the car would be able to do that thing or whatever it is. It does do some voice commands. For instance, if I want to travel to Las Vegas, I can just hit the button on the right-hand side of the steering wheel or I can hit a button on the screen and say navigate to Las Vegas and it'll, it'll do it. Uh, the steering wheel, uh, the right button, by the way, it seems to only have that one, one function of hit it and it'll do navigation. Model S has a lot more features on that. And, and by the way, those two buttons are quite solid and they seem very well done, so that's a, that's a really, really good thing. Uh, there's uh, some on the dash, the lower portion of the dash, 
It's a little bit shiny. Uh, I wish it wasn't. I wish it was more of a matte black finish. Uh, that's just my own personal thing. Um, of course, I already mentioned there's no Chatamo or CCS adapter. Those uh, Chatamo is a world standard that's uh, adopted worldwide, uh, but it doesn't have that capability yet. But it should at some point in the next year or two. Uh, the cruise control, it's a little bit clunky to make both the autopilot, which is the, the semi-autonomous driving, uh, go down the road. And that's because when you turn it on, it only selects a speed that is suitable for whatever the speed limit sign that it picks up. So let's say that I was in a place like Kansas and the speed limit's 85, but there was traffic all boxed up doing 20 miles an hour. The autopilot would be ready to go 85 miles an hour if I turned it on. Well, I don't want it to do that. So I would have to go to the screen and bring down that speed. Um, and of course, it's not gonna run into another car. It will only do 20 miles an hour. But as soon as it saw an opening in the road and there was nothing in front of it, the car would accelerate. And maybe I don't want it to do that. In the Model S, it's really easy to modulate. You can just bump down a little lever and uh, behold, it'll slow down the car. Uh, the windshield wiper, uh, it's another software thing. If you walk up to the car, uh, the windshield wipers are going. They'll shoot a bunch of water at you as you go into the car. I'm confident Tesla will get that fixed. On the app and on the screen on the car, it shows that the car, the little computer generated image, the CGI of the car, shows that the charge port door is open. Eh, somebody forgot to uh, you know, figure out uh, that there's a sensor or some other kind of issue uh, in the car. But again, they'll get that fixed. Uh, there's no charge timer. The charge timer is available, but it doesn't uh, work. You can't turn it on. I, it seems like a small thing, but again, I'm confident they'll get that fixed. It's important uh, to know that for electric vehicle owners, at least, for some markets, it's cheaper to charge your car in, in different times. That's called time of use. And for us here in San Diego, California, I have a plan where I can charge from midnight to 5 a.m. Maybe you have something similar in your market. And so I only want the car generally to be plugged in, but not to start charging until midnight and to be complete charging at 5 a.m. Uh, there's no summon mode. Now this is something unique to Tesla. I don't know of other manufacturers that have this, but it means I should be able to pull out a fob or an app or a something and tell the car to back out of a parking spot or back out of my garage. My Model S does this, the Model 3 does not yet. Uh, maybe it will, maybe it won't. Uh, there's no light around the charge port. There's a little symbol that tells you, uh, shaped like a T, that tells you if the charge port uh, is currently charging or what state it's in or if it's ready to be released. But the Model S had a nice ring that was a target. So if it was dark, you merely aimed for the target and you plugged in the, uh, the plug and you could find it every time. This one you kind of have to hunt around and find it unless you have good lighting. Uh, the phone charge port uh, that I mentioned earlier that you could charge two phones. If you have a case on the phone, unfortunately, it would be very difficult currently to make it work. So I'm, I'm not going to take my phone out of its case every time just so I can stick it into the, the charge slot. Instead, I'll probably just plug it in uh, and leave it sitting in the cup holders or something else, which is kind of counterintuitive to what the, what the whole purpose for having these kind of dedicated spots to charge phones was. So hopefully there's a way to fix that. Uh, we'll, we'll look at ways hopefully to do that. Uh, there's no Wi-Fi on the car. Uh, I don't know if that's important for me, but for Tesla, they were doing the downloads via the Wi-Fi from your house. Apparently, it doesn't have Wi-Fi at all, or at least there's no obvious uh, way that it has Wi-Fi. So I guess everything will be sent over the uh, cellular phone network uh, if they're going to update the software, or you'll go to the Tesla service center and they'll plug in and, and upload it the old-fashioned way. Uh, there's a kind of a dangerous thing that happens. Let's say that I'm driving down the road and for whatever reason my computer, that big dash display locks up or I think it's not doing what I want to do and I just want to reset it. Well, you can take, just like on Model S, you can take the two main buttons on the steering wheel, press them, hold them down for a few seconds and you'll see the, uh, the, the thing boot up and re refresh uh, the screen. When it does that, if you have the easy exit feature set, the car will automatically go to that feature. So wherever the, the seat was set for easy exit, it starts moving on you. It may go all the way back or forward or whatever you have for easy exit while you're driving. So hopefully Tesla will say, you know, the easy exit feature doesn't work while the car is moving. Mr. Musk, please fix that. And then finally, uh, the last thing I'll have as a dislike is, it's not so much for me because I had a BMW 3 Series and it does have a bit of a harsh ride. It seems like Tesla tried to mimic that ride and they did a, a nice job, I think, for the uh, Model 3. But for people that are coming from a traditional car, like a, 
a large, you know, I'll say a Cadillac, or maybe from a, uh, a BMW with a, you know, a more plush ride or something. Um, the car might seem harsh, so all I would say is, eh, that's pro it probably is what it is. Uh, you could probably spend a lot of money and get it uh, retuned, but maybe as it breaks in over time, it'll uh, soften up a little bit, but I actually like the way it rides. So anyway, that's kind of my, my short down and dirty review of the Tesla Model 3. I'm Tony Williams with Quick Charge Power, and thanks for watching.